Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and today we're going to talk about a recent exposure draft from the FASB regarding income tax disclosures. Now this is something that has been pretty interesting to see the development of. Um, as you can probably imagine looking at the invitation to comment that came out of the FASB in 2021 and the report released in 2022, one of the things that we know users want is better disaggregation of income statement line items and income taxes uh, was one of those hot button topics. And so what they've decided to do here is to provide some additional disclosures um, in the area of topic 740, which is our income taxes. Now this was proposed on March 15th and comments are due May 30th. Uh, and the goal here is to provide a little bit more transparency. Investors, lenders, and creditors have indicated that they really need to better understand where this income tax line item is coming from. Uh, there's not currently a requirement to disaggregate, and they don't understand the related tax risks and tax, tax planting uh, that is happening um, as a result. And so they want a better disaggregation. Um, now, thankfully, some of these, uh, some of this proposal is only for public companies. Uh, so public companies would have to, on an annual basis, disclose the specific categories in the rate reconciliation. So again, they would be providing a breakdown of federal versus state versus uh, foreign. Uh, and then they would provide additional information for reconciling items that meet a quantitative threshold. So if those items are equal to or greater than 5% of the amount computed, then they would have to provide some additional explanation. Uh, in addition, for the state and local category, they would provide a qualitative description of the state and local jurisdictions that contribute to the majority of the effect of state and local taxes, right? Many entities don't file in just one state, right? Glossa Learning Solutions is a very small organization, and we file in a ton of states, which is why we are so grateful for our tax accountant who's willing to help us out in that area, um, because obviously when we step foot for training purposes in those states, uh, we obviously have to pay income taxes, and so we have a wonderful CPA who does all of that great allocation for us. And so uh, this is not just a big business topic. Obviously, this impacts the smallest of entities. In addition, a public business entity would provide an explanation, if not otherwise evident, of the individual um, reconciling items disclosed uh, and such as the nature, effect, and significant year-over-year -year changes for any of those reconciling items. Now, private companies are not totally exempt here. Uh, they are going to provide qualitative disclosures about the categories of items and individual jurisdictions that result in significant differences between the statutory rates and the effective tax rate. Because as you're probably well aware, there are um, book tax differences that we have to be thinking about here. In addition, all entities, which includes private companies, would have to provide the year to date of income taxes paid, right? So what was that amount paid, right? Cash flow, uh, net of any refunds, disaggregated by federal or national, state, and foreign taxes on an interim and an annual basis. Again, if you don't prepare interim financials, then you don't have to worry about that one. And then the amount of income taxes paid, again, net of, uh, of refunds, uh, disaggregated by individual jurisdictions where the income taxes is equal to or greater than 5% of the total income taxes paid. So this would even further disaggregate into the individual jurisdictions. So you'd have to break this down as to what are causing these income tax payments. In addition, you would have to disclose income or loss from continuing operations before income tax expense or benefit, disaggregated between domestic and foreign, and then income tax expense or benefit from continuing operations dis uh, disaggregated between federal, national, or state and foreign. So they want you to break this down so that we have all of the information uh, in order to be able to do both the cash basis and the tax basis. However, while this is a lot of obviously uh, information around new disclosures, they do remove two existing disclosures. They eliminate the requirement that all entities currently have to disclose the nature and estimate of the range of the reasonably possible change in the unrecognized tax benefits for the next 12 months. Again, that is a very forward-looking concept as they also remove the requirement to disclose the cumulative amount of each type of temporary difference when a deferred tax liability is not recognized. And there are exceptions to why we don't recognize them. In this scenario, it's related to corporate uh, joint ventures and subsidiaries. So again, these are current disclosures that are being removed Moved, uh, and obviously a better disaggregation is taking place. In addition, while they're in there, back at ASU, I think it was 2013-01, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe it was 2013-12, actually. It was either the first or last one in 2013. I'm pretty sure it's actually the last one. Um, what they did is they created this new term called public business 
entity, uh, and that PBE concept has been used since uh, to differentiate. However, when they created it, they decided not to go back to existing guidance. They only used it prospectively. So because they were already in topic 740, they did a little bit of cleanup and they changed any references to public entities to public business entities to be more consistent. And so kind of it's a little bit of a cleanup effort while they were already in there. All right, so I know income taxes is probably not everybody's favorite topic to talk about this time of year, so I totally appreciate that. Um, but I just thought it was kind of funny that in the rotation, we try to mix it up a little bit and not do the same topics every week. We try to give you different things to be looking at. So this one came out last month, um, but it did just perfectly align with coming out right before our tax season uh, is due and our taxes need to be paid. Uh, for those of you who have a 415 deadline, um, I wish you the best. And for those of you who are in the process of doing those tax returns, thank you for all of the amazing work you do. I know I couldn't do it without my CPA, so big shout out to him uh, and his wonderful firm who helps us out. So that's a wrap on this week's blog. I wish you guys a wonderful rest of busy season, and I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.